Yet another mass shooting in America, the second in just three days. A Walmart manager is accused of killing six of his coworkers after walking into work and opening fire, spraying bullets in all directions as his terrified colleagues ran for their lives. Once I saw blood, I was like, oh, this is really real. And then that's when it processed that, like, you have to run or you're going to die. And then I just looked it through the store and all I kept saying was, don't trip, don't fall, don't look back, just run. And the suspected gunman in the Colorado nightclub shooting makes a first appearance in court, facing five counts of first degree murder. The suspect's attorney wrote in court filings that the accused shooter is non-binary. ABC's Matt Gutman has the latest. Record-breaking holiday travel numbers. Nearly 55 million Americans are heading out this Thanksgiving, despite rising costs. As airports and roads are filling up with travelers, ABC's Rob Marciano is tracking a wet weekend forecast. A deadly wave of Russian strikes batters Ukraine. It's caused widespread damage, crippling part of the country's power grid, hitting residential areas and striking a maternity ward where a newborn baby was killed. Now more U.S. aid is on the way. Fighting for their future, the food supply a tribe received from a California river used to be plentiful, but as numbers dwindle, there's a new plan to save this crucial waterway. This river is part of their lifeblood, so the passion that comes to these projects from the, the tribe, it's not about the project, it's about restoring and, and bringing back the resources to the people. The sounds we hear throughout the day can provide the rhythm to our lives. Musician and philanthropist Ziggy Marley explains how his new book is encouraging children to find music in everything. If you give the child the freedom and the family the freedom to make their own music, you don't have to be a musician like me. Good evening, everyone. I'm Stephanie Ramos. Thank you so much for streaming with us. We're following the holiday travel crush and that all important weather forecast. But as millions of Americans get ready to shop on Black Friday, we begin tonight with a deadly shooting at a Walmart in Virginia, an all too familiar scene in America in 2022. Authorities say late last night, a gunman armed with a handgun walked into the store and opened fire, killing at least six people before killing himself. One victim was found at the front of the store store, at least two victims found dead in the break room. The gunman is said to be a store manager. Police arrived just two minutes after the first 911 call and entered the store two minutes later. The shooting at Walmart comes after the mass shooting at an LGBTQ club in Colorado Springs last weekend, where five people were killed. And the deadly shooting at the University of Virginia, where three members of the football team lost their lives just 10 days ago. There have been more than 600 mass shootings in the U.S. this year, averaging more than one mass shooting a day. ABC's Jay O'Brien leads us off from Chesapeake. Tonight, the chilling survivor's account of the moment a Walmart store manager opened fire, killing six people just two days before Thanksgiving. Brianna Tyler, who works at the store, tells me the gunman, identified as 31-year-old Andre Bing, fired into a break room during a staff meeting at the start of the overnight shift. Did he say anything? No, he said nothing at all. Just no. started shooting? He just started shooting. He did not say a word. He didn't look at anyone specific. He didn't point. He literally just put the gun up and just started shooting aimlessly at anything and everything that was moving in the room. A bullet whizzing by her. It just missed you? Yeah, it had, it had just missed me. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Couple inches yeah. in the other direction. Yeah, couple of inches. Brianna, only on the job at Walmart two months, thought it all might be a drill. I froze. I just stood there, not realizing what was going on. I'm looking at everybody dropped down on the floor. But then she realized what was happening. The moment I, I, I looked over at my friend, and her, she was slumped over, her eyes were closed, and there was blood just gushing out of her neck. That's when it kicked in for me, and I was like, oh, this is real. I was like, I have to run, and that's literally all I thought of. And he went in one direction, and I just went in the other, and I was just praying the entire time I was running was, I hope he's not behind me. Brianna says the gunman then moved into the store, still shooting. Respond to District 402, 1521 Sam Circle at the Walmart for a gunshot wound. Police say when they arrived minutes later, the gunman had already taken his own life. Tonight, the city releasing the names and faces of five of his victims, Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, and Tanika Johnson. 
A sixth victim has not yet been publicly identified because he was only 16 years old. In the hospital tonight, seven people now recovering. One of them, 24-year-old Jalen Jones, another Walmart employee. His mother describing his escape. He thought he was going to die. It was a moment where he just had, you know, you have blackouts and you feel like you're just leaving, but he just kept going. Authorities say the gunman was armed with a handgun and several magazines of ammunition. In a statement, Walmart said Bing had worked for the company since 2010. This is a horrendous event. It's a horrendous, senseless act of violence. And tonight, these somber words from President Biden. There are now even more tables across the country that will have empty seats this Thanksgiving. There are now more families who know the worst kind of loss and pain imaginable. So much pain. Jay joins me now from Chesapeake, Virginia. And Jay, any word tonight about a possible motive? Well, Stephanie, that's the question hanging over investigators here. What could have possibly led to this? We've heard from witnesses who describe that manager, Andre Bing, as someone who often clashed with employees, the kind of manager that employees didn't go up to speak to unless they had to. But many tell us they did not expect something like this to happen. And he had been with the company for so many years. Uh, so shocking uh, to, to cover this and to see this happen again. You've been there all day. What's the scene been like there as people learned what happened? Well, we've had employees of this Walmart pulling up to speak with us. Uh, they didn't know some earlier on in the day that it was closed. They were reporting to work. There was confusion. There will be a vigil later on tonight where we're expected to see members of the community who are still obviously shell-shocked and some survivors who escaped that Walmart earlier. All right, Jay, thank you so much for that update. Thank you. Another mass shooting just days earlier at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. The suspect made their first court appearance today and is expected to face murder and hate crime charges for allegedly killing five people. The city paid tribute to those victims by unfurling a historic 25-foot pride flag at City Hall. And there are new details about a chilling Facebook message posted by the suspect's mother hours before the mass shooting. ABC's chief national correspondent Matt Gutman has the latest. Tonight, the alleged killer in the Colorado nightclub massacre appearing in court one day after being released from the hospital. 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, seen via video conference, slumped over in a chair. You can see the injuries to the face and head. Could the defendant please state his name? The suspect facing charges for first-degree murder and hate crimes. D. Allen, was there a concern that he wouldn't be physically competent for today's hearing? Uh, he was slumped there was over. nothing communicated to me that he would be physically incompetent to be here today to participate in this process. During the shooting, the suspect tackled by Rich Fierro. There was a pistol in the ground or in his hand. And at some point, we both went for it and I got it. And then I used it as any tool you would find. Court documents submitted by the defense team stating that Aldrich is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. Did you know that, that the suspect considers themselves non-binary? I personally don't believe that to be true. Just because of, you know, who I knew Andy to be, I'm just not, I'm just not buying it. Xavier Krauss was his yeah. friend and neighbor. He told me he heard Aldrich make homophobic remarks Everybody and that the suspect there. showed him their guns. And that's when, you know, he told me it's not the guns that you got to be afraid of, it's the people. Krauss providing this video to ABC News showing the suspect firing an AR-style rifle at a shooting range. The video posted to TikTok by Aldrich's mother with the hashtag fun at the shooting range. And overnight, ABC News obtaining this chilling Facebook post from the suspect's mother, seemingly concerned about her son's whereabouts in the hours before the shooting, saying, my son is missing. He took my phone and my debit card. We had plans and we were so excited. She ends by saying her son told her, get ready to have the best night ever. Love beats hate! And today at the Colorado Springs City Hall, hundreds gathering, an historic pride flag unfurled in remembrance of the five victims. So many families affected. Matt Gutman joins us now. Matt, where does the investigation go from here? 
just this afternoon, Stephanie, the DA says they're going to review the evidence and bring formal charges against the suspect at the next hearing on December 6. Now, the DA told me that he has no plans to offer a plea deal here, but that means it could be a very long road for the victims and their families. The DA says he doesn't see this going to trial for another two years. Stephanie. Wow. Okay, Matt, thank you so much. Across America tonight, millions of people are on the move ahead of Thanksgiving. This is set to be the busiest Thanksgiving travel week in three years. From the road to the sky, we have you covered tonight. And after a summer of cancellations, major American airlines appear to have come ready for the crush so far. ABC's Gio Benitez covers transportation for us in reports. Tonight, day two of packed airports across America, the number of passengers expected to come very close to pre-pandemic levels. Airports jammed with people from Chicago to Los Angeles. Traffic was tough. Going through the airport was very tough. So a lot of traffic and a lot of people. And in St. Paul, Minnesota, long lines at the checkpoint. Typically, I come at this time when I fly out, and there's not this amount of people. Usually, you breeze right through. American, United, and Delta expected to serve a combined 18 million customers this holiday. Roads seeing some of the busiest traffic, with nearly 49 million expected to drive. And while gas prices are falling, AAA says the 363 national average for a gallon is still the most expensive Thanksgiving week average on record. I mean, what else can we do? You know, I mean, you have to travel. You have to get from point A to point B. Americans willing to fight the crowds and their budgets if it means getting away for Thanksgiving. It tells us that despite the inflation, despite the high gas prices, people are still wanting to reconnect with their friends and their family and their loved ones. Where there is a will, there is a way. Gio Benitez joins us now. Gio, so far airlines appear to be handling the crush of passengers pretty well. Stephanie, it is incredible given how busy those airports are right now. Across all of the airlines, four cancellations. In fact, United Airlines tells us they had zero cancellations all day long. And what's incredible about this is that obviously over the summer, these airlines learned quite a bit when we had all of those problems with cancellations and delays. But no doubt about it, this nice weather had something to do with it too. <laughs> Stephanie. Absolutely not bad at all. I should have booked a trip somewhere, but I was fearing that it would be crazy out there at airports, but not bad. Thank you so much, Gio. <laughs> Thank you. Let's get straight to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano, who will answer a critical question so many of us have tonight. What is the weather going to be like during this long weekend and that crucial Sunday travel day? Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, I guess, as always, it depends on, on where you are, but it's pretty quiet right now. Uh, Gio alluded to that. That's going to change quickly overnight. We've got some energy that will uh, come into the plains, and nearly everybody at some point this weekend will have some uh, weather problems. Let's go to the maps and show you it's pretty quiet on the interstates and the airports uh, this evening, but uh, energy coming out of the Rockies will spread some snow across Denver and then into the high plains of uh, New Mexico and, and Texas during the day tomorrow. Dallas to Houston along I-10, I think we'll see some heavy rain with thunder and lightning at times that pushes in through Memphis as well and into onto the East Coast on Friday. Pretty diffuse rain event Friday there. But the second system you see coming into the same spot in Texas on uh, Friday. That one's got a little more punch to it, I think. Dallas, Houston gets it again. Shreveport, Memphis, you're going to get some heavy rain, I think, during the day on Saturday. And this quickly moves into the northeast come Sunday. And it's warm enough to it'll be mostly rain, but Rain could be heavy at times during the day on Sunday from Chicago down I-80 to New York, I-90, I-95. Uh, there's going to be some travel trouble spots here, I think, in the northeast and east coast as we wrap up the holiday weekend. Stephanie. All right, Rob, thanks so much. We head overseas now to the war in Ukraine, where Kyiv is in the dark after Russia unleashed a barrage of missiles across the country, specifically targeting power plants. Even a newborn was killed when a maternity ward was destroyed. ABC's Marcus Moore is in Kyiv. Tonight, horror in southeastern Ukraine. Crews rushing to pull survivors from the rubble of a deadly Russian strike on a maternity hospital. A doctor and a new mother rescued, but tragically her baby, born just two days ago, 
did not survive, according to authorities. The hospital destroyed. Officials say 75 missiles and drones rained down across Ukraine today, one of the largest barrages since the start of the war, killing at least 10 people and injuring dozens more while crippling the country's already damaged power grid. Millions without electricity in below freezing temperatures across a majority of the country, including the capital of Kyiv, where a missile hit this residential building, killing at least five people. Firefighters working into the night to look for survivors. It is just an awful scene here. You can see the ceiling of this residential building has been destroyed and rescue crews using a ladder to search for anyone who may be trapped in the rubble. 16-year-old Vitali rushed to the scene and tonight is still anxiously looking for his friend and a teacher who lived in the building. Have you been able to reach your, your friend or teacher? No, no. Okay. okay. What, what have you been doing to, tr to try to reach them? I called, I write, wrote. Okay. You know, you're worried about them. Yeah. Such a horrible situation there. Our thanks to Marcus, who is in Kyiv. The war in Ukraine is one of the factors experts say will contribute to record heating costs this winter. And as many of you know, due to the recent cold snap, Americans are already feeling the pinch. Here's Alexis Christophorus with tips on saving money while staying warm. With the coldest air of the season sweeping across the country, millions bracing for a winter heating crisis. Costs expected to rise a record 28% on average. I've been in the business 40 years. I have never ever seen a winter like this. Robert Spiegel owns a home heating oil business in New York and says supplies are at a 15 year low. Right now there's no reason to see that inventories are gonna build as quickly as we would like. Experts blaming a perfect storm of factors. Low supplies of diesel, heating oil, and natural gas. A massive refinery shortage and a global supply crunch due to the war in Ukraine. Of course, how much more you spend depends on where you live and how you heat your home. Natural gas, which heats about half all U.S. households, expected to climb 28 percent. Heating oil projected to rise 27 percent. Propane up a more modest 5 percent, while electricity costs could jump by 10 percent. We didn't turn the heat on as earlier as uh, we usually do just to save a couple bucks. Homeowners Joe and Roseanne Tripoto say the soaring cost of heating oil is already forcing them to cut back. So things like going out to dinner or, you know, something's got to give. So we tighten up our belts where we can. The Chipotos typically use about 1,100 gallons of oil to heat their three-bedroom, 2,500-square-foot home in upstate New York. Last year, that cost about $3,000. This winter, it will jump to $4,400. You know, we're more conscientious of what we spend our money on. But it could have been a lot worse if the Chipotos hadn't locked in their price early in the season. Since then, heating oil is up another $2 a gallon, saving them more than $2,000 in heating costs. How happy are you that you locked in your heating oil price early? Ecstatic. Spiegel says this year, 80% of his customers opted to lock in their heating oil price early. Some years they benefit from it. It gives you peace of, peace of mind. Experts say you could save at least 20% on your heating bill by keeping your thermostat at 68 degrees, plugging up leaks around doors and windows, and insulating crawl spaces, basements, and attics. The big wild card now, just how cold will this winter be? Some great tips. Thanks, Alexis. When we come back, the family eternally grateful after one brave officer put their life on the line to help save a baby. And we're learning new details into the mystery over what happened to those four murdered Idaho college students. Plus, the indigenous tribe fighting not only for their food supply, but also their future. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Okay, we made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. 
Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Hi, <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Monday, GMA's getting you into the holiday spirit. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Yes, it's the one and only Gloria Estefan and family performing for you live. Monday, only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by CarMax. So, what's good to read? And we mean really good to read right now. Well, that's where Charlie and Kate Gibson can help. Join us for the new podcast series. It is called The Bookcase with Kate and Charlie. We will make sure you love what you read. Listen, wherever you get your podcasts so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. Tonight, the tribes that rely on California's second largest river are fighting for the future of their food supply. Salmon, which used to be plentiful, are now vulnerable, and an ambitious plan that will result in the largest dam removal in U.S. history could save their food supply. Here's why we all need to be paying attention to this. Our Kena Whitworth has this in-depth report. Raising five children on the Yurok Reservation, Molly still weaves baskets, cooks acorns, and wears traditional face tattoos. Keeping tribal memories alive is important to the whole family. There was a whole period of assimilation, right? It's like, don't speak your language, don't get your traditional tattoos, um, you know, like hide that you're Indian, just try to, you know, be in like mainstream white culture. And when they can, they fish reliant on the salmon that have run these waters of California's second largest river, the Klamath, since what the Yurok tribe calls time immemorial. The tribe now watching those salmon numbers dwindle. A couple years ago, fish numbers were really, really low. And we had about three cases of fish in our pantry. And so Frankie and I had just made the decision ourselves that, um, that we wouldn't fish. Um, in an effort to kind of let as many fish up the river as we could. Without the salmon, nearly 92% of the Klamath River Basin tribes face food insecurity and rely on federal government help. One of the reasons that we do a lot of camming, we rely on salmon specifically, not only just because it's a part of our traditional diet, uh, but the nearest grocery store is about 45 minutes away from here. Um, and that's our local grocery store on the reservation. And as the western mega drought worsens, the water levels are reaching historic lows and temperatures too warm for the salmon to survive. Alarms have been going off since 2002 when 34,000 adult salmon were killed in the Klamath. Yurok tribal members turned their attention to the four dams holding back water along the river. Your entire relationship, in the time it has taken the dams to be removed, you have built a family and a life together. Yeah. Yeah. This month, the federal government gave the green light to remove the four dams along the lower Klamath River, a decision the Yurok tribe has been waiting on for years. 
This is the Iron Gate Dam, and the idea is to remove this one and the three behind it simultaneously, completing the project by fall of 2024, which would allow that year's fall Chinook to return to their original spawning grounds for the first time since 1918. But while they wait for the dams to be removed, the tribe is working year-round to restore the Trinity River, the largest tributary to the Klamath. So where we're walking right now, you said is the largest restoration project in the history of the Trinity River. That is correct. It's a huge cleanup effort of mine tailings from the what, 30s and 40s? Yep, yep, from the Oregon Gulch mine. Do you think sometimes when people think of river restoration, they might not imagine a scene like this? No, they definitely don't imagine a scene like this. We've got local people that have come out to the project and they're actually very shocked as to what we've accomplished in the short amount of time that we've been out here. And most of the work is being done by tribal members themselves. We met Alderon McCovey working the excavator, who says it's nonstop work that he feels a responsibility to do. Our people are salmon people, and we've always believed if the salmon ever disappear, then we're pretty much done. So we got to do what we can to keep the fish in the river, you know? This river is part of their lifeblood. So the passion that comes to these projects from the, the tribe, it's not about the project. It's about restoring and, and bringing back the resources to their people. It's amazing to see all that. What unbelievable work. Frankie and Yurok biologist Kyle DiGiulio take us along the Trinity for a look at some of the completed projects, helped by funding from the infrastructure bill. Government leaders are saying, you know, we're working with the tribes. We're going back to the tribes to try to learn from their connection to the land how to get us out of this problem. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? I agree that they are absolutely coming to us more than they ever have in the past. And I think they're finally starting to uh, listen to what we've been trying to say this whole time. By building up areas along the banks, creating structure and slowing the water, they've seen the numbers of juvenile salmon more than double. But still, Kyle says the recent passing of the dam removal was the only way to see adult salmon return in those same numbers. What kind of difference will that make? It's going to be huge for the fish on the Trinity. The conditions in the lower Klamath are a bottleneck, a limitation on the amount of productivity you can, we can have. Last year, we had a huge juvenile fish kill on the Klamath where we lost 90, 80, 90% of the outmigrating juveniles. But many upstream in Siskiyou County say these dams play a critical role during the increasingly intense wildfire season. In 2010, nearly 80% of the community members here voted against dam removal. This area has been hit by wildland fires incredibly the last several years, and those dams provide a water source to fight fire. The community of Copco was saved because of uh, Copco Dam. They were able to dip water out of it, and that's what played a big part in saving that community. Cal Fire, however, signed off on the removal project in a federal report. Do you feel like you're fighting a losing battle? I fear for the consequences when the dams come out, the flooding, the sediment, the 20 million cubic yards of sediment coming out, the loss of value to uh, property homes, and I'm worried that once the hoop law is done, this county will be left holding the bag for the consequences, the negative consequences of it, that everybody else wash their hands of it, and we'll have to live with it for uh, generations. For Frankie and Molly, and so many more in the Yurok tribe, the dam removal means literally bringing life back to the river that they rely on so much. Salmon are a keystone species for the survival of this ecosystem that we're a part of. And if there ever comes a time when there's no more salmon in the river, then our ecosystem will have failed completely and won't be able to sustain our life here on this world. And that is not just for the Yurok tribe. Absolutely. That is for humanity as a whole. As a whole, 100%. Our thanks to Kena and her team for that insightful report. Still ahead here on Prime, could former Vice President Pence be questioned by the DOJ about what he knew about Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election? And the one and only Ziggy Marley is joining us, and he has a new book out that we'll tell you all about. Plus, we can't forget the brave men and women all around the globe who will be spending Thanksgiving away from their family. We take a look at what their holiday will look 
like by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day. The NYPD apparently spotted Buddy the Elf not too far from here on the Upper East Side. There he is, hopping along. <laughs> at stake. So much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You got me feeling like your health, your money, breaking news, exclusives, pop culture, and with the biggest stars, music, trends, style, and some laughs and some good food. You got me feeling like... You know, that sounds pretty good. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons, for everything you need to know. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Next oh, no. Tuesday night, come to laugh, <laughs> feel loved, and learn the secrets of one of the most loved Christmas movies. Love actually is... And how did Hugh answer? Oh, dead. <laughs> and relive the dance. Find out why it almost didn't happen and is now all across TikTok. Genius. <laughs> the Diane Sawyer Special, next Tuesday night on ABC. Zoo! 200! Oh, 200! 200 episodes of Dr. Paul. Oh. Music to my ears. It's been 10 years, and I'm still having the fun. <laughs> that rocks. He's got the moves that make your animals groove. Now we do the dance of joy. Yay! He's like the Justin Bieber of the music. <laughs> Headlining the hottest barns. Cut out! It's a show you won't want to miss. I'm not going to be here forever. Maybe. <laughs> the Incredible Dr. Paul. New episodes Saturdays at 9 on Nat Geo Wild. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. So, what's good to read? And we mean really good to read right now. Well, that's where Charlie and Kate Gibson can help. Join us for the new podcast series. It is called The Bookcase with Kate and Charlie. We will make sure you love what you read. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. U.S. troops deployed around the world will be enjoying all the flavors of Thanksgiving tomorrow. Here are some of the details behind catering a home-style Thanksgiving across the globe by the numbers. More than 370,000 pounds of food have been shipped in preparation for the Turkey Day Feast, 9,155 whole turkeys, and another 41,745 pounds of roasted turkey ought to make sure everyone gets their fill. Add to that more than 41,000 pounds of beef, nearly 24,000 pounds of ham, and about 17,800 pounds of shrimp for a true Thanksgiving bounty. Then there's more than 9,000 pounds of sweet potatoes to make plenty of casserole for dessert, 85,971 pounds of pies and cakes and 2,274 gallons of eggnog to wash it all down. Make sure you have some water as well. Military logistics team started planning this year's Thanksgiving menu and ordering supplies back in March to make the American holiday a reality for men and women in uniform around the world. And as a vet, who spent a Thanksgiving overseas, we thank you. It's so appreciated. And we still have a lot to get to here on Prime. After the turkey feast comes the other great holiday tradition, shopping. But what are the best deals out there? Trey Bodge is standing by to tell us a few. And the growing outrage over this Balenciaga marketing campaign, why are these teddy bears in bondage gear? And the chart topper making no apologies for being her authentic self, our conversation with Fletcher. But first, here's a look at our top trending stories on abcnews.com.
much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. Next oh, no. Tuesday night, come to laugh, <laughs> feel loved, and learn the secrets of one of the most loved Christmas movies. Love actually is... And how did Hugh answer? Oh, dead. <laughs> and relive the dance. Find out why it almost didn't happen and is now all across TikTok. Genius. <laughs> the Diane Sawyer Special, next Tuesday night on ABC. Monday, GMA's getting you into the holiday spirit. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Yes, it's the one and only Gloria Estefan and family performing for you live. Monday, only on Good Morning America's Concert Series. Sponsored by CarMax. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> I you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. For making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. In Chesapeake, Virginia, a gunman opened fire at a Walmart break room, killing six people before police say he turned the gun on himself. Police confirming the shooter's identity as 31-year-old Andre Bing from Chesapeake. They say he was armed with one handgun and several rounds of ammunition. Just after 10 o'clock Tuesday night, the first 911 calls came from inside this Chesapeake, Virginia Walmart. By 11.20 p.m., police declared the scene safe, no risk to the general public. Police confirming the shooting started in Inside the break room of the store, the shooter was an employee. Police in Idaho say they've received hundreds of pieces of information regarding one of the murder victims, Kaylee Gonzalez, potentially having a stalker. But authorities say they have not been able to verify or identify one. This comes as police receive other tips from the community, like surveillance video, which could help investigators piece together a timeline leading to the gruesome stabbing deaths of Gonsalves, Madison Mogan, Shanna Kernadel, and Ethan Chapin at this off-campus home. In a news conference today, Moscow's police captain described how the murders have shaken the city. You know, in some ways, this took our innocence. ABC News confirms former President Mike Pence has been contacted by the Justice Department. They are seeking to question him as part of the ongoing probe into the January 6th Capitol riots and efforts by President Trump and his allies to overturn the 2020 election. Sources tell ABC News that Pence is considering the request. The former vice president recently broke his silence on Trump and January 6th in an interview with David Muir. He said he received multiple calls from Trump and his allies to stop the certification of the election results and said Trump's words in his speech on January 6th were reckless. Where's the baby? A harrowing rescue caught on camera in Jacksonville, Florida, with an officer arriving to find an infant in a retaining pond. Body camera footage from June shows the officer, who officials said didn't know how to swim, jumping into the pond to grab the child and bring them out of the water. The officer brought the child onto land where she and other responders performed CPR. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office praised the officer for her actions to save the child's life, even when her own was put at risk. 
Fashion House Balenciaga facing backlash, accused of sexualizing children in a controversial new ad campaign. The luxury brand now apologizing for these photos showing little girls in Balenciaga sweatsuits with plush bears and what appeared to be BDSM inspired harnesses and these uncovered documents on the desk showing an excerpt from the 2008 U.S. Supreme Court opinion, U.S. v. Williams, which upheld the criminalization of pandering of child pornography. A heartwarming tale of giving involving two couples. Ron and Chris Morales are both kidney transplant recipients, and the donors, good friends Brad and Debbie Thompson. Back in 2020, Ron discovered his kidney was failing, and Brad answered the call to help. But this wasn't the first time the Thompsons donated a kidney. Seven years earlier, Chris discovered she had polycystic kidney disease. Her childhood best friend, Debbie, stepped up. Brad has since been released from the hospital, and Ron is expected to make a full recovery. After that Thanksgiving meal, millions of Americans immediately turned their attention to getting the best deal. TrueTrade.com smart shopping expert Trey Bodge joins us now with more on how to stay focused this Black Friday and Cyber Monday and also what to look out for before buying. Trey, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am really looking forward to these tips because I'm trying to knock out my Christmas shopping so early. Friday's the big day. There are so many deals that are out there. What is the best way to concentrate your efforts and find the best bargain. So thanks so much for having me, Stephanie. Uh, the first thing that I would say is not to try to do all your shopping over Cyber Weekend, just because it's oh. too much to really manage. I would focus on the categories that are historically the most deeply discounted over this weekend. So that would be tech, fall fashion, beauty, and small home appliances. If you focus there, you'll do really well. Okay, I am taking notes. Okay, I will do that. I'm not gonna try and cram it all in on Friday. Spread it out, wait a few weeks. Okay, is there yes. any offer that you've seen where you've been like, wow, that is the best price I've seen on this particular item in a really long time? I've seen a lot of very deep discounts, and I think it's because of some of the residual overstocks that we're seeing throughout the pandemic, and retailers are just looking to move merchandise. So a few of my favorites are from Target, who I'm working with. So $300 off a 65-inch Element Smart TV, which is 42% off. $100 off of Beats Solo 3 wireless headphones, which is 50% off. And then uh, $200 off a KitchenAid, which is 44% off. And then if you have to be a Target red card carrier, you can save another 5% and then potentially another 1% if you use the Circle app. So there are so many ways to save at a store like Target. And these are the kind of discounts that we're really expecting right now, especially from the bigger retailers. So I'm the type of person that if I'm in a store and I see something on sale and it looks like a good deal, I will Google that same item and see if it pops up somewhere else. So I, I, I always feel like I'm getting scammed. <laughs> But how do you know if something is actually a good deal? So Googling is a great idea, and okay. I love to hear that you do this. I, I suggest this to everyone to do your homework, and Google can be a really good tool. Another one that I really like is PayPal Honey, who I work with. And the reason why I like this one is because once you install it, it's a browser extension, and as you browse around online, you can do this on your phone, your tablet, your computer, you'll see the Honey logo, you hover over it, and you'll be able to tell right away if this is a low price or if this is a high price based on historical price. And then in addition, you'll learn whether there are coupons that you could apply to the order or cash back that you can earn. And then over Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Honey will have enhanced cash back, sometimes as high as 24%. So you can save a lot just by using a simple tool like that. Okay, so we all face this battle every year. Is it worth waiting for Cyber Monday or is Black Friday the best time to shop? Such a good question. So a lot of the deals that I've been seeing have been valid all week and they're all the way through Cyber Monday. However, what I'm also seeing is that some retailers are unlocking deals, say on Saturday or Sunday for Cyber Monday. So it's a little tricky to tell. I think it would be helpful if you do that price comparing, do a little homework and then get a sense, okay, is this deal deep enough for me or am I willing to wait? Right, so many deals, and then you end up shopping practically every single day for like the next week and a half. So <laughs> you've had so many great tips, but finally, what is your number one bit of advice for people planning on doing a whole lot of shopping this weekend? 
you know, we actually covered it. Do your homework. Don't take a price at face value. You're going to see great prices everywhere. Everything's going to look really exciting. Stop, take a beat, check your list. Is this something that you need? And then do a little digging to find out if you're getting a really great deal or if you should wait. Because it's important to note that as we go into December, other categories will be deeply discounted, like toys, winter apparel, anything holiday themed. Those categories will be better in December. So you can kind of hold off on those things, not try to knock it all out over Cyber Weekend and take your time a little bit. That is great advice. Take a beat. Don't work off of those impulses. Stephanie, don't work off of those impulses. I will remember those <laughs> tips. Trey, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Rising pop star Fletcher is making waves, music, and hits. She's on a mission to inspire others and become the artist she never had growing up. ABC's Ashin Singh recently went backstage with her and introduces us to this singer-songwriter. Yes. Carrie Fletcher is on the verge of a major milestone. The rising pop star, simply known as Fletcher, preparing for a sold out performance. Here in the city that started it all. I went to NYU and I would pass this sign every single day. And to be here tonight, and it's like my name's on it now. It's like and the fans ready to see and hear the NYU grab. Fletcher has been busy this past year playing sold out shows around the world with hits like Bitter and Girls, 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 a reimagined version of Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl. All while working on her first full length album. Making this album has come from such a place of like truth and knowing myself in a different way than I ever have before. It feels like freedom. But finding freedom hasn't always been easy for the 28 year old. Growing up like young and queer, like I didn't feel very represented. Anything I make to this day is to be the artist that I needed when I was a little girl. One of the most radical things that you can do in a society that wants to box all of us in is make waves. And make waves she has by being unapologetically herself. Fletcher constantly pushing boundaries in the pop world from her 2019 breakthrough hit, Undrunk, Wish I could get a little drunk, so I the most added song on Top 40 Radio that year, to her latest viral hit, Becky's So Hot, about her ex's new girlfriend. I'm from Jersey, so I don't really have much of a filter. To me, it's just like oversharing is, is caring. The Asbury Park native's love of music started much earlier, back when she was just a kid. Take me back to Asbury Park, New Jersey, young Carrie Fletcher. Yeah, young Carrie Fletcher. How do you find music? I was a very socially anxious kid. I didn't have that many friends. I was singing before I was ever even speaking. My mom put me in voice lessons when I was five years old, and I was able to communicate things that I wasn't able to verbalize just by speaking. Music became more than a refuge. It became a passion, and it wasn't long before a teenage Fletcher was wowing judges on The X Factor. Did you feel that you had to adhere to this box that society put pop stars in? I think from the very beginning of my career, one of the first songs I put out was a song called Wasted Youth, um, which you know featured like me falling in love with the girl. Wasted, 
there was a lot of backlash that I got prior to putting that out of being like, are you sure you want to do that? I was so terrified before I, I, I put that out. And then the moment that I did and the messages that I started getting about how meaningful and how important that video was for people to see, I get, I'm actually getting emotional. I haven't talked about that song or anything in a while. And What did people say? You have no idea how much it means to like see this. And for it to be in a way that's like celebrated in media, like queer people are represented of having this like really intense struggle, right? And it's like, no, people are just humans who just like want to love. It's a message that has resonated with her millions of fans who have found a safe space in Fletcher's music. Yeah, she's just like super open and brutally honest. And that's what we love about her. Look at all these people, they're so different, and like she'll accept it, yes. and that's it. Yes. Anyone else want to add anything? And she's she's all... Like... <laughs> and this crew got a private mini concert. It's like being on the outside of an inside joke. It's like we only got Pepsi and you really want Coke. It's like you finally get a text back and it's just your mom. If it's the music that draws in her fans, it's her openness that keeps them. A younger version of me was very closeted and really terrified. And it has truly been one of the most empowering journeys to like step into my skin. And when Fletcher steps onto the stage, she never disappoints. Throughout all the furniture and pictures, I bet you sugarcoat the truth. I bet you real sweet with you. I know she's good. Yeah. You're like a rock star, man. Congrats to you. That was un unbelievable. How do you feel? Dude, I feel crazy. That was like such a high. I feel so good. But when you're on stage, I feel like you like unleash a beast. Who is that on stage? I feel the most me in the world when I'm on stage. It feels like this like superhero version of me that I aspire to be more like in my everyday too. I mean, what's it like being this queer superhero for <laughs> this group of fans who, like, love you so endlessly? Something that I just really want to represent for people is self-expression and freedom. However it is that you identify, know that there is a place for you. She practices what she preaches, raising $50,000 this past June for GLAD through her Meet Her at the Bar Pride Month experience, where she announced the name of her debut album, Girl of My Dreams. Is it a surreal feeling to announce your album? I was driving past and I saw my face on the top of a taxi cab. Yo. And I was like, Mom, I made it. I'm the only girl on my dreams. What's different about this project for you? It's way more of like, I look into the relationship with myself versus like the world outside of me. All my EPs and music have been about other people. And like this album is like me coming into the realization and like the self love of being able to say like, I'm the girl of my dreams. You're the girl of your dreams. I'm the girl of my dreams. So this, this project is about Carrie. Yeah, it's for Carrie. Our thanks to Ashin for that report. Turning now to music found in everything, everyday sounds from the rain falling to children laughing is music to one's ears. These sounds provide rhythm that can turn into lyrics, creating a song. And what better way to learn about the beauty found in music than through a book? Jamaican musician and philanthropist Ziggy Marley's new picture book, Music is in Everything, celebrates the endless forms of music, how we hear it every day and the ways these sounds inspire us. <laughs> Ziggy's telling me that's his son that you, that you just saw right there. It's so adorable. Joining us now is none other than the author, Grammy Award-winning artist, reggae icon, and member of the legendary Marley family, Ziggy Marley. There he is, who's in studio yes. with me here tonight, yes. Ziggy. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So excited to meet you. This book is an ode to your song, Music Isn't Everything, which is a single on your children's music album, More Family Time. Yes. Why was it important for you to recreate this song and, and and turn it into a children's book 
Well, I feel like music um, plays such an important part in a child's upbringing and development. And sometimes we think it means like, you know, you have to put on a stream something or you have to get like some kind of professionally made thing. But if you give the child the freedom and the family the freedom to make their own music, you don't have to be a musician like me. You don't have to have an instrument. You can make music with anything that's around, you know, the pots, the pans, the forks. Just bust out in a jam session. Whatever. With, with, just, with anything. Do you guys it, have jam sessions at home? Yeah, man, we do it all the fans? time, man. We do it all the time. I mean, the, the pots and pans is a real thing. We actually do that stuff, <laughs> beating the pots and all that. This book, of course, centers around music. Why is it so important for you to help children get better exposed to music and those natural sounds? Well, true experience. I mean, I've, I've grown up in a musical family, right? So I know what music can do for you as an individual and as a child coming up in that. And I've also experienced it with my young ch children now. Um, my youngest is now six, but all of my kids, them, they grew up around that music. And music brings joy. Music brings family together. And um, it's just a great way, as you said, for, as an outlet for, of expression for kids. Absolutely. In the book, there is a black family at the center of it with different mm -hmm. hair textures. What impact do you think seeing this type of representation has on children? Well, it's important to represent all type of, all, all type of humanity. Mm. Um, and um, I think throughout the history, it's, I mean, it's getting better now, but throughout history, really, um, I think the depiction of um, um, brown people or people of different cultures within the American society or within society in, in general has been lacking. And so we make an effort to, um, in this book to make sure we put that out there that all families can relate to it. We are in New York City. It's a little brisk right now. Mm -hmm. Not too bad today, Not but too bad. Uh, take us to Jamaica. What sounds would we be hearing right now if we were there? Growing up in the hills in Jamaica for me and walking around, it's like nighttime, it's like the crickets. Like, and you know, it's funny, being in America, I, I guess being in the city especially, you don't hear a lot of those sounds. <laughs> that we're used to hearing growing up in Jamaica and in the hills or whatever. Um, but it's the crickets. I'm hearing the crickets and I'm hearing the birds. Um, if I'm at the beach, I'm hearing the ocean, of course, mm -hmm. and the waves. And there's a beach in Jamaica that um, we go to. And when the waves hit the gravel, it's a different sound than when the waves hit the sand. It's just beautiful to hear, you know? Which is musical. <laughs> yes, beautiful. <laughs> so you're not only an, an author, musician, you're also a philanthropist. You founded your nonprofit foundation, Urge, that aims to help children globally. But your main focus area is Jamaica and Ethiopia. Mm. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the foundation and what prompted you to start it? Well, I mean, it, what prompted me is just my upbringing, really, and seeing my parents helping people. Um, and then when I grew up and had my own means, I started just doing the same thing. And eventually we started a foundation called Urge, and it means unlimited resources given enlightenment. So for me, it's not just about the material things, but it's about giving of yourself, giving love to those who are not loved, you know? And I'm sure it's very much appreciated. Like, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much Thank for being so much, here. Yeah. I just want to sing Arthur all the time <laughs> because it plays constantly in our house. So thank you for giving us that yeah. piece of music. <laughs> and you can get Ziggy's new book, Music Isn't Everything. It is out wherever books are sold. And before we go tonight, the image of the day. Germany's soccer team players cover their mouths as they pose for a photo ahead of their World Cup match with Japan. The protests were because FIFA blocked rainbow armbands promoting gay rights by threatening players who wear them with yellow cards. Germany did go on to drop their match in a stunning loss to Japan, but human rights groups are crediting them for their pregame silent act of rebellion. And that is our show for this hour. Stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thanks so much for streaming with us. In the next hour, the charges just filed after this college football brawl you may remember.
with so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby. It was crazy. Behind the table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. From the giant sequoias to the waterfalls, it's an amazing place. But in Yosemite, criminals go on vacation, too. The park ranger found partial human remains. It was a human hand. That opened the possibility of suspects. Henry Lee Lucas. Carrie Stainer. Donald Gibson. Any of them could have done it. We're going to figure this thing out. Wild Crime, Season 2, Murder in Yosemite. Now streaming only on Hulu. It's lunchtime in America. So, what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You got me feeling like... Your health, your money. Breaking news, exclusives. Pop culture, and with the biggest stars. Music, trends, style. And some laughs. And some good food. You got me feeling like... You know, that sounds pretty good. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons, for everything you need to know. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Ramos. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We're monitoring several developments here at ABC News at this hour. Seven members of the Michigan State University football team were charged today in last month's brawl following their game against University of Michigan. The most serious charge was a felony assault count against the team's cornerback. Six other players were charged with misdemeanors. No Michigan players are facing charges. A 20-year-old hiker who set out on a solo hike in the New Hampshire mountains over the weekend has been found dead. Emily Satello was dropped off in the White Mountains on Sunday for a planned day hike. A family member reported her missing when she did not return. Search and rescue teams say temperatures along her route were about zero degrees with 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. Computer maker HP announced plans to cut four to 6,000 employees over the next three years. HP is the latest technology company to announce it's slimming down in the face of economic challenges. The company said computer sales have fallen off since the rush on new machines early in the pandemic. Now let's get to the latest on our top story tonight, the mass shooting at a Walmart store in Chesapeake, Virginia. The suspected gunman was a store manager. He walked into the store with a handgun and opened fire, killing at least six people before killing himself. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more. Tonight, the chilling survivor's account of the moment a Walmart store manager opened fire, killing six people just two days before Thanksgiving. Brianna Tyler, who works at the store, tells me the gunman, identified as 31-year-old Andre Bing, fired into a break room during a staff meeting at the start of the overnight shift. Did he say anything? No, he said nothing at all. Just no, started shooting? He just started shooting. He did not say a word. He didn't look at anyone specific. He didn't point. He literally just put the gun up and just started shooting aimlessly at anything and everything that was moving in the room. A bullet whizzing by her. It just missed you? Yeah, it had, it had just missed me. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Couple inches yeah. in the other direction. Yeah, couple of inches. Brianna, only on the job at Walmart two months, thought it all might be a drill. I froze. I just stood there, not realizing what was going on. I'm looking at everybody drop down on the floor. But then she realized what was happening. The moment I, I, I looked over at my friend, and her, she was slumped over, her eyes were closed, and there was blood just gushing out of her neck. That's when it kicked in for me, and I was like, oh, this is real. I was like, I have to run, and that's literally all I thought of. And he went in one direction, and I just went in the other, and I was just praying the entire time I was running was, I hope he's not behind me. Brianna says the gunman then moved into the store, still shooting. Respond to District 402, 1521 Sam Circle at the Walmart. 
for a gunshot wound. Police say when they arrived minutes later, the gunman had already taken his own life. Tonight, the city releasing the names and faces of five of his victims, Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, and Tanika Johnson. A sixth victim has not yet been publicly identified because he was only 16 years old. In the hospital tonight, seven people now recovering. One of them, 24-year-old Jalen Jones, another Walmart employee. His mother describing his escape. He thought he was going to die. It was a moment where he just had, you know, you have blackouts and you feel like you're just leaving, but he just kept going. Authorities say the gunman was armed with a handgun and several magazines of ammunition. In a statement, Walmart said Bing had worked for the company since 2010. This is a horrendous event. It's a horrendous, senseless act of violence. And tonight, these somber words from President Biden after a week that's seen three horrific mass shootings in America. There are now even more tables across the country that will have empty seats this Thanksgiving. There are now more families who know the worst kind of loss and pain imaginable. Absolutely horrific. Our thanks to Jay. Another mass shooting just days earlier at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. The suspect made their first court appearance today and is expected to face murder and hate crime charges for allegedly killing five people. The city paid tribute to the victims by unfurling a historic 25-foot pride flag at City Hall. And there are new details about a chilling Facebook message posted by the suspect's mother hours before the mass shooting. ABC's chief national court Correspondent Matt Gutman has the latest. Tonight, the alleged killer in the Colorado nightclub massacre appearing in court one day after being released from the hospital. 22 year old Anderson Lee Aldrich, seen via video conference, slumped over in a chair. You can see the injuries to the face and head. Could the defendant please state his name? Aldrich. The suspect facing charges for first degree murder and hate crimes. D. Allen, was there a concern that he wouldn't be physically competent for today's hearing? Uh, he was slumped There was over. nothing communicated to me that he would be physically incompetent to be here today to participate in this process. During the shooting, the suspect tackled by Rich Fierro. There was a pistol in the ground or in his hand. And at some point, we both went for it and I got it. And then I used it as any tool you would find. Court documents submitted by the defense team stating that Aldrich is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. Did you know that, that the suspect considers themselves non-binary? I personally don't believe that to be true. Just because of, you know, who I knew Andy to be, I'm just not, I'm just not buying it. Xavier Kraus was his yeah. friend and neighbor. He told me he heard Aldrich make homophobic remarks Everybody and that the suspect there. showed him their guns. And that's when, you know, he told me it's not the guns that you got to be afraid of, it's the people. Krauss providing this video to ABC News showing the suspect firing an AR-style rifle at a shooting range. The video posted to TikTok by Aldrich's mother with the hashtag fun at the shooting range. And overnight, ABC News obtaining this chilling Facebook post from the suspect's mother, seemingly concerned about her son's whereabouts in the hours before the shooting, saying, my son is missing. He took my phone and my debit card. We had plans and we were so excited. She ends by saying her son told her, get ready to have the best night ever. Love beats hate! And today at the Colorado Springs City Hall, hundreds gathering. An historic pride flag unfurled in remembrance of the five victims. Our thanks to Matt for that update. Across America tonight, millions of people are on the move ahead of Thanksgiving. It's the busiest Thanksgiving travel week in three years. From the road to the sky, we have you covered tonight. And after a summer of cancellations, major American airlines appear to have come ready for the crush so far. ABC's Gio Benitez covers transportation and brings us this report. Tonight, day two of packed airports across America, the number of passengers expected to come very close to pre-pandemic levels. Airports jammed with people from Chicago to Los Angeles. Traffic was tough. Going through the airport was very tough. So a lot of traffic and a lot of people. And in St. Paul, Minnesota, long lines at the checkpoint. Typically, I come at this time when I fly out, and there's not this amount of people. Usually, you breeze right through. American, United, and Delta expected to serve a combined 18 million customers this holiday. 
Roads seeing some of the busiest traffic, with nearly 49 million expected to drive. And while gas prices are falling, AAA says the 363 national average for a gallon is still the most expensive Thanksgiving week average on record. I mean, what else can we do? You know, I mean, you have to travel. You have to get from point A to point B. Americans willing to fight the crowds and their budgets if it means getting away for Thanksgiving. It tells us that despite the inflation, despite the high gas prices, people are still wanting to reconnect with their friends and their family and their loved ones. Where there is a will, there is a way. Gio Benitez joins us now. Gio, so far, airlines appear to be handling the crush of passengers pretty well. Stephanie, it is incredible given how busy those airports are right now. Across all of the airlines, four cancellations. In fact, United Airlines tells us they had zero cancellations all day long. And what's incredible about this is that obviously over the summer, these airlines learned quite a bit when we had all of those problems with cancellations and delays. But no doubt about it, this nice weather had something to do with it too. <laughs> Stephanie. Absolutely not bad at all. I should have booked a trip somewhere, but I was fearing that it would be crazy out there at airports, but not bad. Thank you so much, Gio. Thank you. Let's get straight to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano, who will answer a critical question so many of us have tonight. What is the weather going to be like during this long weekend and that crucial Sunday travel day? Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, I guess, as always, it depends on, on where you are, but it's pretty quiet right now. Uh, Gio alluded to that. That's going to change quickly overnight. We've got some energy that will uh, come into the plains, and nearly everybody at some point this weekend will have some uh, weather problems. Let's go to the maps and show you it's pretty quiet on the interstates and the airports uh, this evening, but uh, energy coming out of the Rockies will spread some snow across Denver and then into the high plains of uh, New Mexico and, and Texas during the day tomorrow. Dallas to Houston along I-10, I think we'll see some heavy rain with thunder and lightning at times that pushes in through Memphis as well and into onto the East Coast on Friday. Pretty diffuse rain event Friday there with the second system you see coming into the same spot in Texas on uh, Friday. That one's got a little more punch to it, I think. Dallas, Houston gets it again. Shreveport, Memphis, you're going to get some heavy rain, I think, during the day on Saturday. And this quickly moves into the northeast come Sunday. And it's warm enough to it'll be mostly rain, but Rain could be heavy at times during the day on Sunday from Chicago down I-80 to New York, I-90, I-95. Uh, there's going to be some travel trouble spots here, I think, in the northeast and east coast as we wrap up the holiday weekend. Stephanie. All right, Rob, thanks so much. Tonight, police investigating the murders of four college students revealing why they've been looking into reports one of the victims had a stalker. We obtained information through some of our interviews that Kaylee had made some comments about a stalker, so that's where that came from. The family of Kaylee Gonzalez says they're not aware of any stalker, but police are still investigating those tips. So far, we have not been able to corroborate it, but we're not done looking into that piece of information. Authorities maintain this was a targeted attack, but won't say why. And now, 10 days after the murders, the Gonzalez family worries the answers might be slipping away. If you look statistically at homicide cases, those first 10 days are so incredibly important in finding a suspect. That's not very encouraging to hear that they want to cast this wide net of suspects now. This tight-knit community shattered. Moscow's my home. And I know we won't be defined by tragedy, but how we respond to it. Yeah, and Stephanie, while they don't have a timeline for those DNA results yet, police tell me they remain a top priority at the state lab. Stephanie. Thank you, Kena, for that update. We head overseas to the war in Ukraine, where Kyiv is in the dark after Russia unleashed a barrage of missiles across the country, specifically targeting power plants. Even a newborn baby was killed when a maternity ward was destroyed. ABC's Marcus Moore is in Kyiv. Tonight, horror in southeastern Ukraine. Crews rushing to pull survivors from the rubble of a deadly Russian strike on a maternity hospital. A doctor and a new mother rescued, but tragically her baby, born just two days ago, 
did not survive, according to authorities. The hospital destroyed. Officials say 75 missiles and drones rained down across Ukraine today, one of the largest barrages since the start of the war, killing at least 10 people and injuring dozens more while crippling the country's already damaged power grid. Millions without electricity in below freezing temperatures across a majority of the country, including the capital of Kyiv, where a missile hit this residential building, killing at least five people. Firefighters working into the night to look for survivors. It is just an awful scene here. You can see the ceiling of this residential building has been destroyed and rescue crews using a ladder to search for anyone who may be trapped in the rubble. 16-year-old Vitali rushed to the scene and tonight is still anxiously looking for his friend and a teacher who lived in the building. Have you been able to reach your, your friend or teacher? No, no. Okay. okay. What, what have you been doing to, tr to try to reach them? I go, I write, wrote. Okay. Are you worried about them? Yeah. Stephanie, you may be able to see the weather conditions here are just miserable. It's continuing to rain. You can see the snow behind me, temperatures below freezing. And most of the, the power, has, there's been limited restoration to the power to most of the country, but uh, there are still millions of people who have no electricity with these conditions or water. And it does seem that Russia's attempts to demoralize the population here is only seeming to further ignite some Ukrainians' resolve to fight. As the United States has announced another $400 million military aid package that includes long-range artillery equipment and ammunition. Stephanie. Such a horrible and difficult situation there. Our thanks to you, Marcus. New details coming in tonight of the death of Shankola Robinson, who died after vacationing with friends in Mexico. An arrest warrant has now been issued against one of her friends, her mother, telling ABC News she cannot wait for justice to be served. Our Matt Rivers has the details behind her tragic death. A family looking for answers surrounding the death of North Carolina native Shanquilla Robinson at a luxury resort during a vacation in Mexico. The FBI now investigating as a bombshell new development has emerged. Mexican authorities say the American tourist may have been alive and that a medical professional on site may have been working on the 25-year-old for three hours before police arrived on the scene. According to local Spanish language reports, one of the guests staying at the resort called for help around 2 p.m. Upon arriving, informing medical professionals that she had, quote, drunk a lot of alcohol. A doctor reportedly said she was stable but dehydrated, suggesting she be treated at a hospital. The guests, however, insisted she stay in the villa. Law enforcement authorities not called until later, eventually declaring Robinson deceased just after 6 p.m. Those reports differing from an autopsy obtained by ABC News, listing that medical professionals arrived at the villa around 3 p.m., declaring her dead within 15 minutes, citing the Charlotte native died from a severe spinal cord injury and a dislocated neck. We got our first day, buddy. This morning, a new video surfacing showing Shanquilla resting in a hammock at some point before the trip turned deadly. Buddy, buddy, buddy. I heard some stuff, you know, dead body, dead body. And, you know, that just made me wonder, you know, that was they playing all the time. This on the heels of the now viral video, too violent to show, of a female roommate appearing to assault Shanquilla. They just stood there and watched and didn't even try to stop it or break it up. She wasn't even fighting back. They attacked her. Over the weekend, the community gathering to lay the once vibrant businesswoman to rest. Justice can't come soon enough for the Robinson family. They let me know that my daughter's being murdered wasn't going to go in vain, that somebody's going to be prosecuted. Matt Rivers for us in Mexico City. Thank you, Matt. And still to come, the coordinated attack inside Jerusalem during their morning rush and the new fears across the region. And also, meet the drag queens, crisscrossing the country, trying to spread love and understanding. This is ABC News Live. The crushing of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Oh, <laughs>
Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Can <laughs> I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. We're tracking several headlines around the world. Two separate explosions at bus stops in Jerusalem this morning killed a Canadian-Israeli teenager and injured at least 18 others. The blasts hit busy areas during the morning commute. Israeli police say it appears that shrapnel-laden explosive devices were placed in both locations. They are searching for the suspected attackers. Such coordinated bombing attacks have been rare since the end of the Palestinian uprising nearly two decades ago. In China, police beat workers protesting over a pay dispute at the world's biggest iPhone factory. The release of the new iPhone 14 has been delayed by controls imposed to contain a surge in COVID-19. Foxconn, the factory operator, had offered incentives to bring in new workers, but new recruits say the company changed the pay package once they arrived. In Mexico, a viral video of an unidentified tourist climbing an ancient Mayan pyramids is drawing outrage. Locals and visitors grew angry when they spotted this woman breaking park rules to scale the sacred st structure, shouting, lock her up and sacrifice. You can see them there chasing after her. The woman danced when she reached the top, further enraging people there nearby. She was escorted away from the site by officials. They report that the temple was not damaged. They are fabulous and fearless, and they are taking on small town America in an effort to spread love and the art of drag. Drag stars Bob the Drag Queen, Eureka O'Hara, and Shangela sat down with our very own Eva Pilgrim for this fun and profound chat. Joining us now is Eureka O'Hare, Shangela, and Bob the Drag Queen. Hi. Yes. Ladies. Yes, Woo! we're you, here. You are here. And that's actually the name of your series that you guys are yes, currently it is, in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, Bob, about this new series, about this series, this episode, this, this series. Season. So we're here, first of all, we've, we've, done, we've done three seasons. This is our third season. And each season is so different because the world has been changing so much. You know, season one was pre-pandemic. Season two was during a very tumultuous election year. And season three is post the election with a new president, plus pre-pandemic, during the pandemic. It's been so wild. And um, this season really reflects the times in a way that is both um, gut-wrenching, inspiring, touching, saddening. It's a reflection of the, of the life we live in. Mm -hmm. In the series, you're going to small towns. Yes. And you're putting on a show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shangela, what's that like going into these towns? Because they're not always yeah. happy to see you there. Well, you know, our show is a real life docuseries and it reflects what is going on in our country and in these spaces that we go to. And a lot of times we go to very conservative spaces to, yes, put on a show, but more importantly, we're partnering with people who are part of the LGBTQ community or one of our allies and highlighting their unique experience and story to remind people that, you know, there are people in our community that still feel isolated, that still feel alone in places, and sometimes you can find community in some of the most unlikely places, that's what our show really does. So it's really exciting to be able to be a part of that, especially being from a small town myself. Eureka, for you, what has that experience been like? 
You know, it's just been um, life changing for me getting an opportunity to work with people that um, are a lot like me when I was growing up, you know, coming from a small town in East Tennessee, but also being a person of difference, whether it was, you know, living in a world where it's not built for me, my size, who I am as a person, how I decide to express myself, especially in a small town in East Tennessee where I was very ostracized and bullied and singled out. You know, so I relate with a lot of the children that we work with. So we're able to highlight their experiences, but more than anything, we're able to show them how much support they actually have in these communities, how much love there actually is. And the fact that, dare I say it, we're here because we're everywhere. You know what I mean? Queer people exist in everything and everywhere. So we're not going anywhere. It's time to start allowing us just to live our lives. When you think of drag, most people think, I mean, it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you think showing people that fun changes their opinions or their viewpoints at all, Bob? Well, I think um, some people, you can't change their opinions. You know what I mean? And people looking at drag, they know it's fun. They know, they know that it's meant to have fun and, and be touching and to be moving. And some people are um, immovable objects. You know, some people's hearts have been made into stone, and some people are teetering. And maybe, uh, and it's not about seeing the drag, it's not about seeing the fun. It's about when you're up on stage and you see how much it means to someone to be accepted by their community for the first time. Do you think you're changing lives? I definitely think that we're having a major impact on lives, communities, and we're having an impact on ourselves even. As we continue to evolve, I think the show just continues to grow, and I know that we're having a major impact. I can feel it. You know, when we have our drag kids, we look at them, we meet them, and over the course of about 12 to 14 days, we see this transformative experience that happens not only for them, but also for those around them, sometimes within their families, sometimes just within the community, but most importantly, within themselves. Eureka, talk to us about the drag kids, the drag sisters. This is a thing okay. that is part of the community. Yeah. I mean, Chosen Family has been very important for us in our community because a lot of times we're pushed out by our, you know, cis families or blood families. And it's because of discrimination or the moral code that is brought on us by, let's say, religious beliefs or family values. And people use those words to bully or, or give a dictation of how a family is supposed to be ruled. And what we're doing with ourselves is we're deciding to support each other like the family that we never had. Mm -hmm. You know, showing up for each other, um, telling each other the truth, being honest. Sometimes it's not always positive. I love that. Who's the biggest queen here? In height, size, <laughs> volume, <laughs> in, in volume. Tiba, in, in volume, volume. Yeah. loudest. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, in uh, volume, maybe. I mean, mass, Eureka. In attitude, me. Attitude, Bob. <laughs> so there's, yes. enough, there's enough queen to go around. Exactly. I love how you support each other. You're you did Dancing with the Stars this season. Uh -huh. yes. Stars? Wait. Yes. What? Yes. You like, and she you won. She was there. Why didn't you tell me? Uh, <laughs> ha has how has that impacted your life? Well, it's been amazing because you know I'm the first person to ever perform or appear as a drag entertainer in the 31 seasons of Dancing with the Stars. The first male-on-male -male partnership ever in the history of Dancing with the Stars here in the U.S. So that has been something very special, not only to me, but hopefully to little me's that are out there are people who support people like me. It was brilliant to be able to make it to the finale of this show and to feel the support of so many people who were voting each week and saying like, keep going, don't give up. What is your message to the little me's out there who see you guys, because you are public figures at this point? What's the name of our show? We're here. Mm -hmm. You know, the show's called yeah. We're Here because no matter where you say it in the world, it's true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I would say, like, being queer is not quite like being black or being Asian or something, because you need Asian people to make an Asian person. You need black people to make, you don't need queer people to make a queer person. Queer people pop up everywhere, in every community, every corner of the world, every, no matter where you say we're here, it's gonna be true. There will always be queer people there, but sometimes you feel like it's just you by yourself. You feel like I'm here, but there are more people like you in your community, more than you even realize. Mm -hmm. And I think I would just say, you know, own the space that you take up. You know, stop telling yourself that you don't deserve the space that you exist in. Whether it's your size, your race, your gender, regardless, that space that you have is yours. And no one can take that away from you. Own your space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eureka, Shangela, Bob. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, yeah. so much. Thank, Thank you, you. you. You've been incredible to work with. We love you. Your smile's love beautiful. You You're gorgeous. You look like Linda Evangelista. Oh, what? Yeah. Did you stone those times? Okay. We need to have more queens around. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, guys, and we'll send it back to you. 
Our thanks to Eva for introducing us to the drag trio. And still to come, the janitor who has everyone bobbing their heads. You don't want to miss it. Next oh, no. Tuesday night, come to laugh, <laughs> feel loved, and learn the secrets of one of the most loved Christmas movies. Love actually is... And how did Hugh answer? Oh, dead. <laughs> and relive the dance. Find out why it almost didn't happen and is now all across TikTok. Genius. <laughs> the Diane Sawyer Special, next Tuesday night on ABC. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast. Now streaming on ABC News Live. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. Zoo! 200! Oh, 200! 200 episodes of Dr. Pole. Oh. Music to my ears. It's been 10 years, and I'm still having the fun. That rocks. He's got the moves that make your animals groove. Now we do the dance of joy. Yay! He's like the Justin Bieber of the <laughs> Headlining the hottest barns. Cut out! It's a show you won't want to miss. I'm not going to be forever. Maybe. <laughs> the Incredible Dr. Pole. New episodes Saturdays at 9 on Net Geo Wild. And finally tonight, sometimes in life when you discover a hidden talent, you've just got to roll with it. And that's exactly what one young janitor at a Colorado elementary school is doing. Reporter Danny New from our partner station in Denver introduces us to the rapping janitor in our local lowdown. For the only janitor at Coyote Hills Elementary, Eli Garcia thought his job would mostly be to clean. When I got into this position, I was like, I'm going to just be a ninja, I'm going to play the background, but I'm going to do it excellently. I'm going to execute everything I need to do perfectly. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But that only lasted until this past February for Mr. Eli, as the kids call him when a certain halftime performance piqued one student's interest. He was like, Mr. Eli, can you rap? And I just spit a couple bars from him. He was like, what? You even know how to rap? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't know what he really asked. Anybody here that I got these bars, I'm trying to tell you that I go really far. It I'm turned out he had actually been rapping since his school days in the same town. We had learned from the people they ride the bus with, and they were like, oh, yeah, we got to have him rap. So now, every day during every lunch period, Mr. Eli puts on a little halftime show for each table. Sometimes it's a song he wrote for his three children at home. I love you. I love you. I love you. Other times he can just freestyle. Uh, lunchbox. Lunchbox got the socks that you need to rock, but you understand how I cop my rhymes. He's got a gift, and the school's principal sees how much this enthusiasm has inspired the students. We have kids now that sign up to sing during lunch that have a passion for singing. The last one was about how great Mr. Eli is, so it was a uh, first grader, and she kind of sang a little song about Mr. Eli is the best. I never, I never expected to be so uh, noticed. And the kids love them, we can tell. That is our show for tonight. Stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Stephanie Ramos. Thanks so much for streaming with us. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how